The CPI numbers just recently dropped today. And so I want to go ahead and share that with you guys. CPI report is essentially just telling us where we're at with inflation. In January, the CPI number was at 6.4%. In the prior month to that, we were at 6.5%. Now in the month of February, we're all the way down to 6 percent down from 6.4 percent and so it met the expectation which means it's a overall generally a good thing inflation is still there it's still going up just not as much as it did the big question is how is this going to actually affect the decision of the fed and their raising of interest rates because that's the big kicker you know if the fed continues to raise interest rates as they have the economy will continue to get pretty rocky. As we've already seen, things are slowly starting to break with the banks collapsing. So I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about that later in the video. And if you haven't yet, definitely go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your subscription. March 22nd, the Fed is going to have another meeting where they're going to consider to raise interest rates again, if at all. So the last time the Fed raised interest rates by 0.25 basis points. So it was looking very likely that the Fed was going to raise interest rates again, this time around by 0.25. However, the last time Jerome Powell testified against Congress. He was extremely hawkish. He essentially said if the reports continue to come back strong, CPI numbers continued to stay high and unemployment continued to stay strong, then he was likely going to raise it by 0.5 basis points. So a lot of people were expecting that. Therefore, we saw the fall in the stock market as of the last couple of weeks. Now we're slowly starting to see the economy break a little bit with this whole bank situation, which you've probably heard of at this point. And this is mainly due to the Fed raising interest rates. So this is the why we want to pay close attention to interest rates, inflation, and what the Fed is doing. So with this whole bank situation, the banks, three different ones, Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, as well as Signature Bank, they all essentially were insolvent. They couldn't pay out their depositors. They didn't have the money to do so. And how it all kind of unravels is essentially when the banks collect your money or when you're depositing your money and they get your money, they don't just hold it in cash. They go ahead and use your money to invest in other things and they collect the interest. So they usually buy things that are very boring, things that just pull in not that much money, things that are not too risky, obviously. So they buy things like mortgage-backed securities and T-bills. And at the time when they were getting your money and investing your money, essentially they were buying T-bills and mortgage-backed securities that were, that were at very low interest rates. So they weren't collecting that much money because interest rates were low back then. But the inflation rate continued to stay high. So the Fed has raised interest rates faster than any point in history. Now, if you were to go out and get like a high yield savings account, you could see that interest rates have skyrocketed. You can make like at least over 4% just putting your money in a savings account. And so if you were to go out and buy a T-bill now, it could be anywhere from 45 to 5%. So all these banks that bought all these T-bills and all these mortgage-backed securities when interest rates were low, they weren't making that much money. And so now that all these people were trying to pull out their money, the banks didn't have all this money in order to pay out their depositors and all these withdrawals that were coming in. And so what they had to do was force sell all of their T-bills, all of their investments at a very low price. So they were actually losing money to the point where they couldn't even afford to pay out all the withdrawals that was happening. This just, you know, is a complete wildfire. More people hear about it, especially over social media. And so more people People start to continue to panic and pull out their money. The bank continues to not have enough money to pay out these withdrawals. Therefore, it causes this bank run and this whole situation starts to fall apart and the banks end up collapsing. Of course, this isn't the first time that a bank run has happened. It's happened many times in history. So when it has happened in the past, we set up this thing called FDIC insurance, where essentially if your account has $250,000 or less, then you are safe. So if the bank goes bankrupt and is in solvent and they can't pay out your money, then you will be safe 250K and below. So people like me and you generally don't have a quarter of a million dollars sitting in the bank. But these banks, especially Silicon Valley Bank, were banking with all these companies in Silicon Valley, these tech companies that had way over $250,000. And so when they were unable to pay that out, there was very big trouble for all of these companies that had over $250,000 that were banking with Silicon Valley Bank. 
think. So the government recognizes, FDIC recognizes, the Fed recognizes. They called for an urgent meeting soon after all of this kind of unraveled. Now the government has recognized that this is a big problem, that a lot of people are going to get hurt by this. They're moving the goalpost of 250K. Now all the people that banked with Silicon Valley Bank and all these other banks are going to be safe. This whole bank situation is just a very clear example of why we have central planning versus free markets. I think most of us like to think that we have free markets, but if that was the case, then anybody that had banked with Silicon Valley Bank that had over 250K, they would essentially be screwed and they would have lost a lot of money. But of course, that's not the case. The government steps in, the Fed steps in, the FDIC even steps in and makes sure that everybody is okay and it's safe. And this kind of goes back to the whole situation of the recession, of this downturn in the economy, where the Fed is essentially purposefully doing so to lower demand to get inflation under control by raising interest rates. And this is why we should wait until the Fed finally pivots and starts lowering interest rates, because history has shown that once the Fed pivots, then the stock market bottoms after that. And that would be a great time to buy because then we have bottomed and we're in our next recovery and bull run. So that's a great time to buy, which is something that I've been waiting for. Of course, I'm still dollar cost averaging because you never really know what's going to happen. But I'm waiting to go all in, go in heavy once the bottom is actually in, once the Fed begins to pivot. It's looking very likely sometime in 2024. It's likely that the Fed isn't going to raise rates by 0.5 basis points because we're already in a very rocky situation. We already see major cracks in the economy with the whole bank situation. So if the Fed raised interest rates by 0.5, that would just be absolutely nuts. The stock market would for sure crash at that point. Going back to CPI report, you know, generally the overall CPI inflation number is coming down. The biggest movers that have dropped quite a bit is natural gas or your utility bill, as well as your oil your at your fuel pump, at your gas station. They're all coming down. But the one that is continuing to stay high, that's keeping the inflation high, is within the services sector. So we have the goods sector and we have the housing sector, which generally are affected quite quickly when the Fed raises interest rates, but within the services, it takes a lot longer. So uh, water and trash continues to stay high. Rentals continues to stay high. So if you're renting an apartment, lodging, if you're going out to Airbnb or hotels, they stay high. Uh, insurance, car insurances, public transportation, airplane ticket prices, they continue to stay high. Recreation services, pet services, personal services, such as haircuts, you know, laundry, those continue to stay high. So within the services sectors, it's just really difficult. Inflation is showing to be very sticky. The Fed's goal overall is to get inflation down to 2%. Their prediction is that they're going to get inflation down to 3% by the end of 2023. But of course, if history is any indication, we know that when the Fed lowers inflation, that unemployment begins to skyrocket. So by the end of 2023, if they actually meet their goal of 3%, then that means that unemployment will likely go to 7 or 8%, which means that we have entered into a full-blown recession. That means that we should all be preparing to lose our jobs because say if unemployment reaches 10%, that's literally like one in every 10 people that do not have a job. I am preparing now while I still have my job and say if I did get laid off on my job sometime later in 2023 when things start to you know get really, really bad that I would be okay. I'd still have enough money to pay my bills to pay my mortgage for some time until I can find my next job. Even if you get unemployment benefits, the unemployment insurance, it will take at least one month until you actually get your first check. And so by that month, you're going to have no income. And so you better have at least some money, at least at the very least a month to be able to pay all of your bills before you get that first unemployment check. And even when you do get that unemployment check, the issue is that it's not going to be as much as you what you used to make when you did have your job. And that's why you should prepare now. As far as what I'm doing in the stock market, in my investments, I'm essentially just piling up all my extra 
extra cash waiting for the rainy day to either, you know, prepare myself if I did get laid off at my job or if the stock market finally bottoms, I'm going to go all in and buy heavy after the Fed pivots. So I'm still waiting for that situation. At the same time, you know, that's timing the market. We all know that timing the market doesn't always play out in our favor. And so I'm still dollar cost averaging. What I'm dollar cost averaging is buying into VTI, Vanguard's total stock market ETF. I'm happy to buy it under 200 bucks. So it's fallen under 200 bucks recently after this dip in the stock market. I'm also dollar cost averaging into my 401k. So that's generally just buying the Russell 1000, which is the best asset that my 401k has to offer with the lowest expense ratio. So I'm essentially just buying into the Russell 1000, and but only up into the match. I'm also fully investing into my Roth IRA, you know, because I, I feel like the Roth is such a great tool as far as tax-free money in the future. What all the money that I make in my Roth IRA, I'm not going to need to pay taxes once I retire, once I'm 59 and a half years old. So I think that's such a great thing. The maximum deposit that you can put in a Roth every single year is now moved up to six and a half thousand dollars. Bitcoin has shot up at the moment. So Bitcoin is like over 26,000 bucks, which is just insane. It went, you know, from like 24,000, hovered around 24 for quite a while. And then it went all the way down to 19,000. And now just like in the past couple of days, bounce all the way back up to 26. Absolutely ridiculous. Bitcoin can be all over the place. If you have made some money up until now, that's great. I, I'm just kind of waiting at the moment, just waiting on the sidelines, waiting until Bitcoin actually falls. And once the stock market and once the overall economy gets gets really bad, then I will finally jump in once the time is right for Bitcoin. No FOMO at the moment. I don't really care what Bitcoin does. I'm just waiting for it to actually fall. If it falls, great. If it doesn't, then whatever. I'm out. It's okay. All right, guys, that is about it for the video. If you liked the video, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. I'm really trying hard to get this channel monetized. So I need at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So if you're still watching, you are freaking awesome. Awesome. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, that's about it for the video. My name is Jimmy Invest, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.